So we're going to draw a small kidney in the corner just so that I can show you where exactly we're looking today. So I'm just going to draw a really quick kidney here. And of course, attached to the papilla area, we're going to draw in our pyramids. Now the pyramids are actually just tubes. Think of them as drainage pipes. The renal pyramids are just drains, pipes. That urine will flow through, of course. Um, now if we were actually to zoom in super close, to the distal end of those pyramid tubes, what you would find is that at the end of each tube, you have a bunch of really small structures called nephrons. There are many nephrons, and it would look kind of crazy if we try to draw them in, since many nephrons would look like that. Yeah, I just drew a random squiggly line. <clears throat> That is a nephron. But notice how it is super small, and there should be many attached to that one tubule. There are about like a million-ish of these guys. So we're not going to draw all of them. We're just going to zoom in on one, OK? So I'm going to draw the box that indicates we're zooming in right here. We're zooming in right here today. So for the drawing of the nephron, I'm going to draw it about maybe half or a little three quarters even of the page. And I'm going to save the last quarter for a few notes about the nephron. So first of all, we start with where the urine actually forms, which is the Bowman's capsule. So we'll do all the labeling afterwards and the drawing first. So I'm going to draw a Bowman's capsule here. It's just this bulbous structure. There's actually something that goes inside of this bulbous structure. And this bulbous structure is where urine is first formed. And that urine will actually flow through a tube all the way out through to the urethra. So the tube is going to look something like this. So this super distorted uh, twisty tubule here is called the proximal convoluted tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule has an area where it starts kind of going downwards. And this is known as the descending loop or descending limb of Henle. And urine will flow downwards, and at some point, the urine will actually follow the loop upwards. And this is known as the ascending limb of the nephron loop. You're going to find as it continues to ascend, it starts to get very convoluted again. Now, the way you draw the ascending loop here, it's going to get convoluted, it's going to get messy, but no matter how many squiggles you decide to put in, make sure one of your squiggles gets really close to the capsule again. So I'm just going to draw it. And then as the urine flows through the distal convoluted tubule, at some point it will be drained into a collecting duct. Now this collecting duct will collect fluid from another nephron. So there should be another nephron right here to our right. So we're going to go ahead and draw another one here. And that is actually just the uh, area or the renal tubes in which urine will form and flow through in the beginning. Um, well, we still need to talk about the blood vessels that supply um, all the fluid to this area and help remove some of the blood. <laughs> all right, we're going to draw the blood flow. So I'm going to switch over to red to represent oxygenated blood or a reddish color, whatever you've got. Um, so I'm going to draw the renal artery. Technically, it's supposed to go renal artery and then the interlobal artery, arcuate artery, interlobular artery. We don't really have time for all that, so we're just going to draw. Here's the renal artery, and it will branch and form all those other arteries, and we're going to pretend like we skip all those. And then here's your interlobular artery. The interlobular artery will supply this nephron over here, the invisible one. It will also supply the nephron on our left. Um, so I'm just going to draw it like this. Yeah, so it just branches out. Um, all right, so this now would be our afferent arterial. And here is the part that we just added today. The afferent arterial enters into the glomerulus capsule, and it forms a glomerulus, which is a big knot tangle of uh, blood vessels. There we go. 
And as the blood is flowing through here, the glomerular capsule, um, this is actually where some of the plasma will get pulled out of the blood into the capsule, and then it'll turn into urine, and then it'll start going down the tube. But the blood will actually continue out. The red blood cells that are not going to turn into urine, they are going to keep traveling on. And this is where your efferent arterioles come into play. Um, so basically, it kind of goes around the outline of the whole nephron, but it also has to wrap around every tubule, every area of the tubule. So I'm just going to start drawing branches going all around the um, tubules, the renal tubules. So you can just get kind of random here. Okay, so the catch about drawing these uh, blood vessels is you can go as crazy as you want. However, there is a catch. You can't go any farther than right here where you have that U loop. You can't go any farther than the left half or the middle right there. So this is as far as you can go with that. All right, so as the blood is traveling over under the tubules, it'll supply the tubule cells with oxygen as well. And so when the blood returns, it's going to be deoxygenated blood. And so I'm going to switch over to blue now to draw the rest of the capillary network. Yeah, so over here, it's dropping off oxygen and then picking up any carbon dioxide. So it's going to be blue now. Oh, there, yeah, these are capillaries now. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention that. These are your paratubular capillaries. Um, all right, so we continue. And then as the blood flows over the tubule, it will actually exit the tubule through the interlobular vein. So we're going to draw an interlobular vein here. And finally, the interlobular vein will empty the blood into the arcuate vein and then the interlobar vein and then the renal vein. So we're going to skip everything again. Here's our renal vein. Yep. Okay, now that we've drawn everything, now we can label it. All right, so I'm going to use a black pen to label just so it's easier to see all the labels. So we're going to start here. What did I say this was? Renal artery. So this is where blood flows in. So I put an arrow pointing in so that you know blood flows in that way. And blood will flow up. And I said we skipped a whole bunch of vessels, but this would be our interlobular artery. Black. Blood will flow up the interlobular artery, and as the interlobular artery divides into these smaller vessels, we call these smaller ones the afferent arterioles. Yeah. The afferent arterioles enter into the Bowman's capsule, or the glomerulus capsule. And when it's inside of the capsule, it is called a glomerulus blood vessel. Huh? Yep, yep, yep. So this is the glomerulus vessels here. So this is where blood will lose some of its water, or blood plasma will lose some of its water, also some ions, um, some sugar, some proteins, and some acids, and just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and then the red blood cells that aren't supposed to go into the blood or into the urine. Um, it's supposed to go through the efferent arteriole. Can you have a, a blood in your urine? It's possible. It's possible. Sometimes if the membranes, there's something wrong with the membranes and they're too permeable in the glomerulus, the blood cells can leak out and get put into the urine. Um, but we can talk more about those issues later. The urine goes from, so once you pull all that liquid and waste from the blood into the glomerulus capsule, whatever, um, blood will flow back into the efferent arterioles. It'll continue through. And notice here where we have the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen. This kind of like mesh of capillaries is called your paratubular capillaries, which was one of your vocab words, I think. peritubular capillaries. And then blood will flow back through these uh, interlobar, interlobular veins. Interlobular vein. And then back out of the uh, renal vein. And then back to the uh, inferior vena cava. 
So that was just the flow of blood. Now we have to do the flow of urine. Uh, no, the green ones were arrows, which we might or might not get to. All right, so where is urine first formed? The glomerulus capsule. Capsule. Yes, the capsule would be this outer thing. Yeah, the outer thing. And then the glomerulus is blood vessels. Yeah, yeah. All right, so the capsule right here is called the glomerulus capsule or Bowman's capsule. So as the water is pulled into the Bowman's capsule, that liquid will flow through the proximal, this proximal convoluted tubule. And then urine will flow through the proximal convoluted tubule back and forth and left and right and left and right. And then finally it goes downward. When it enters the tubes that go downward, these are your descending limbs. And then urine will start going upwards through the ascending limbs. Together, the descending and ascending limbs are the nephron loops. But of course, the person who discovered it also named it the loop of Henley. Right? So together, this is known as the loop of Henley. Um, as the urine climbs the ascending limb here, it'll enter into this convoluted tubule known as the distal convoluted tubule. So over here, we're going to label this distal convoluted tubule. And then finally, the urine will go from this nephron into this collecting duct. The invisible nephron we have on the right will also send its urine through the collecting duct. So we're going to label the collecting duct here. Or you can call it a um, collecting tubule, too. The collecting duct will actually drain all the urine into the renal pyramids. Where do the renal pyramids drain the urine to? The papillae, through the papillae. Papillae. Where do the papillae open up to? The calyces. The calyces will open up to the renal pelvis. The renal pelvis will drain into the ureter. The ureter will empty into the bladder. The bladder will drain into the urethra, and then the urethra will drain into the outside world. I'm going to stop at ureter, though. Okay. The good news is there's only three simple steps to making urine. Urine formation. Yeah, but I was going to give you some examples of what happened in each like one. Right? Yeah, we'll have a little bit about this tomorrow. All right, step one that you guys have in your notes called the glomerular formation? Filtration? I just want glomerular. Okay. All right, where does this happen? Yes, based on the name. Glomerulus. The glomerulus. All right, so what exactly is happening? The glomerulus capsule is going to remove water from the blood. It's also going to remove amino acids in the, from the blood. The capsule will remove glucose. Urea, which is a product that is formed along with uric acid whenever you break down certain proteins. Creatine is removed. Creatine is an acid that will help uh, provide energy for muscles. A byproduct of breaking down creatine called creatinine is released into urine. And a bunch of ions, for example, for just a few examples actually, sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate, dot, dot, dot. There's quite a few. There's a whole table in your textbook that'll tell you like what they are and what their concentrations are. Okay, so that means when you're in the glomerulus up here, the, uh, all these things that I just listed and then some are going to get pulled out of the blood into the urine. So your urine should contain these things. However, step two is the tubular reabsorption, which means that a bunch of the stuff that was put into your urine is going to get taken back and put into your blood again. For example, if you guys take a look at this list, which one of these things seem useful to have in your body instead of releasing into the toilet? Water might be nice. Amino acids, so you can build some proteins. Creatine, creatine for muscle, because you're going to go work out later. You need that creatine, right? Yeah. What else would you need? Glucose for energy. What else? Sodium and potassium for your neurons to work. So during tubular reabsorption, a lot of the stuff 
No, you do not need uric acid anymore. Amino acids, creatine, ions, glucose, they're all good stuff. So they get they go back into the blood. Oh, so I'm just going to, like, they can get lifted up and you can get them into the arteries? Yes. So they go back into your blood because technically you need them um, later. But then step three is tubular secretion. Which is where, technically, once all those things go back to your blood, it's not in your urine, then your blood's like, eh, maybe I don't need it. So then some of the chemicals go back into the urine again. It's like a hoarding problem. They're like, no, no, I'm going to use it later, I promise. And then they don't. <laughs> so some chemicals will move from the paratubular, that huge network, capillaries, back into the urine in the renal tubules. 